Red Dead Redemption 2 shows us the demise of the Vandalin gang in 1899 from the perspective of Dutch Vandalin's right hand man and enforcer Arthur Morgan. A viewer recommended I make a video detailing the formation of the gang, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So grab yourself a brew, some biscuits, and cozy up nice and warm as we're going to be exploring the rise of the Vanderlyn gang. So, let's get cracking. Dutch Vanderlind was born in 1855 to a Dutch father and an English mother named Greta. Some speculate that Dutch is a nickname and not Dutch's real name, since his surname is Dutch and his father is Dutch, and thus being named Dutch seems rather intense. I, however, am of the mind that for whatever reason, Dutch's real name is just Dutch. Dutch's father was killed in battle fighting for the Union during the American Civil War, resulting in Dutch's grudge against Southerners. He left home aged just 15 years old, due to rarely getting along with his mother, who passed away in 1881 and was buried in Blackwater, though Dutch only found out about his mother's death several years afterwards from an uncle of his. As Dutch matured, he developed values for freedom and dreamed of living independent from laws and society, resulting in Dutch resorting to a criminal lifestyle to achieve these desires, at some point finding himself partnered with Colmo Driscoll, which is actually apparently pronounced Colmo O'Driscoll, but that's America for you. How their partnership ended is unknown, though Dutch found himself in strong disagreement of Colmo Driscoll's knack for flippantly treating his gang members. Eventually, malicious events would transpire between the two men, leading them to running rival gangs. At some point in his early criminal life, Dutch met Hosea Matthews, a con artist who attempted to rob him while Dutch was also attempting to rob Hosea. This struck up a spark between the two and they became partners, forming what later became the Van der Linde gang. It's unknown when exactly Hosea was born, but estimates roughly state 1844. Hosea Matthews was raised in the mountains according to his own account. His father supposedly lived a life of sin and debauchery that would make an emperor blush, though he states he only ever saw his father three times in his life, before he died aged 75. In his early life, Hosea briefly worked as a stage actor, with dreams of becoming a comedian, though somehow he became a con artist and wound up in a life of crime. At some point during the mid-1870s, Hosea met Dutch van der Linde at a campfire on the road to Chicago, where he tried to con and rob the young man, only to realise that while he was attempting to swindle Dutch, Dutch had in fact robbed him. Both saw the skill that the other had and laughed, resulting in their friendship and later their partnership. Dutch convinced Hosea that they could find redemption by robbing from the rich and giving to the poor, striving for an anarchistic vision of the world without government or corporate interference, the dream of a utopia free from the pressures and intolerances of civilization and society. The duo found themselves conning several people in Kettering, Ohio, posing as international merchants and conning 12 locals into investing $300 into a false Portuguese shipping company. The two were discovered and arrested by the local sheriff, Sheriff Carmichael. On the 9th of March 1877, the two escaped their cell, robbing and restraining the sheriff in the process. Around this time, Hosea met Bessie, who would eventually become his wife. She died sometime prior to 1899. At some point shortly after the Kettering, Ohio incident, Dutch and Hosea met a young Arthur Morgan.
Born in 1863 to Beatrice and Lyle Morgan, Arthur's mother died when he was very young, and his father Lyle was a petty criminal who was arrested for larceny in 1874 when Arthur was just 11 years old. Arthur later witnessed his father's death, afterwards he donned Lyle's hat. Around 1877, when Arthur was roughly aged 14 years, he met Dutch Van der Lind and Hosea Matthews, who took him under their wing. The two educated Arthur, who matured to share Dutch's vision of a life lived free from the restrictions of society and the laws it brought. Arthur became one of the first members of the Vanderlind gang. Though at first an unruly child, Dutch and Hosea taught Arthur to read, write, fire a gun, fish, hunt and fight among other useful skills that later led Arthur to becoming by far the deadliest, most skilled and reliable member of the gang, earning him the position of Dutch's right hand man and enforcer. At some point Arthur had a son named Isaac who was murdered, hardening Arthur's mindset that his life is in the gang, strengthening his loyalty viewing Dutch, Hosea and company on a familial level. At some point either around here or before Arthur joined the gang, Susan Grimshaw became a part of the gang too. Initially she was romantically involved with Dutch, though eventually Dutch would move on to other women. The gang functioned as a family, spending long nights playing poker and other games, with Miss Grimshaw teaching Arthur how to play dominoes. At some point, the gang acquired a dog named Copper, who Arthur grew close to and assumed the catering duties for. During these early years of the gang, Hosea and Bessie tried to go straight and took a trip through the states of New Hanover and Lemoyne, though Hosea drifted back into the gang, unable to trump his criminal nature. Bessie, however, stuck by him, understanding his predicament. In the year 1885, another iconic member joined the gang. Born in 1873, John Marston was the son of an illiterate Scottish immigrant born on the boat to New York, and a prostitute mother who died during his birth. John initially lived with his father until he was roughly eight years old, at which point his father was blinded in a bar fight and died sometime later, though John was told his father had in fact died in that fight. After his father's death, John was sent to live in an orphanage, where he spent the next few years of his childhood, eventually running away to live on the streets afterwards. Aged 11 years, John committed his first murder, shooting a man though he claimed this to have been no fault of his own. Aged 12 in 1885, Marston was caught stealing by homesteaders in Illinois, who planned on hanging him. Dutch Vanderlyn stepped in and saved John, taking him under his wing and thus raising him as a part of the Vanderlyn gang, in no dissimilar fashion to how Arthur was inducted, with Dutch becoming a surrogate father to the boy. Though John was exposed to the same teachings as Arthur and from a younger age no less, he was less open to them. Though he did take on board how to read, write and etc, he was nowhere near as creative or arguably intelligent as Arthur was. That being said, John also matured into a valuable gun for the gang. John also came to see the world through the eyes of Dutch Vanderlind, though I think it's arguable that he followed these beliefs less religiously than Arthur Morgan did. In 1887, the gang committed its first bank robbery. At 2 o'clock, Hosea, Dutch and Arthur burst into the banking house of Lee and Hoyt. The gang made off with five grand in gold. After the robbery, they lingered in town handing out money to the homeless as well as orphaned children. Around this time, Dutch became a wanted man with an ever-growing price on his head. And between the years of 1887 and 1899, the gang carried out nearly 40 different bank robberies in various places around the country. In the early years, the gang truly did help the needy in a bid to make a difference, with Dutch even once scolding Arthur for robbing a poor man, stating that such actions made them no better than those they opposed. However, the gang eventually stopped stopped giving money to the poor and assisting others and focused on self-preservation, catering for themselves. Dutch even allowed the gang to get involved in loan sharking through Leopold Strauss, which preyed on the lower class people the gang initially sought to fight for. The gang also started killing instead of just robbing, something that Hosea Matthews heavily objected to. Hosea did however stick with the gang out of loyalty to Dutch and the gang he helped build. The Vanderlyn gang travelled through the frontier, performing many other heists, crimes and killings in accordance to Dutch's ever-twisting values. In this time frame of six years, say, the gang picked up new members, though it's unclear when or in what order they joined, but here are the known members. 
Mark and Davey Callender, a vicious pair of gunmen who served the gang. Karen Jones, a con artist and trigger woman with a side dish of alcoholism. Mary Beth Gaskill, a pickpocket rescued by the gang after being detected. Tilly Jackson, a former member of the Foreman Brothers gang hunted by her former gang members. Simon Pearson, a former Navy chief who was rescued by Dutch from loan sharks, later becoming the camp cook. Orville Swanson, a reverend with alcoholism and a morphine addiction who once saved Dutch's life. Sean Maguire, a young Irishman who attempted to rob Dutch and Hosea in North Elizabeth, but was adopted into the gang. Uncle, a petty thief and lazy drunk who just sort of showed up and was allowed to stay courtesy of his entertaining personality. Molly O'Shea, an Irish woman who abandoned her rich family in search of a life of adventure. Josiah Trelawney, another con artist who formed an association with the gang, allowing him to come and go as he pleased. In 1893, the gang came across Bill Williamson, who also had tried to rob Dutch, who simply laughed at him in response. Though angering Bill at first, Dutch cheered him up and brought him into the gang's fold, giving him a purpose in life. Though often considered unintelligent, Bill compensated with his loyalty to Dutch. In 1894, Uncle introduced the gang to a prostitute named Abigail Roberts, who joined the gang and had sexual relations with several of its members, including Dutch himself, Arthur Morgan and John Marston, later getting pregnant with John's child, Jack, who was born the following year. In 1895, Dutch came across a young Mexican exile named Javier Asuela, who was stealing chickens. Javier was starving, so Dutch took him into the gang, feeding and clothing him. Javier began to idolise Dutch, becoming a loyal gunman. In 1898, the gang found itself in Montana. Copper, the gang's dog, passed away around this time. After a fire in which Arthur lost his journal, along with some trouble up north, the gang travelled southeast taking a slow trail down through the northern grizzlies. They spent several months in the wilderness, spending the winter in the western foothills of the mountains. For a brief while, the gang lived in peace. Dutch eventually got a lead on some land for the gang to purchase, but it either didn't match up to his standards or he grew suspicious that law enforcement was watching them and decided to keep moving. While travelling through the grizzlies, the gang picked up several more new recruits. Lenny Summers, a young literate man whom Hosea was slow to trust, though eventually grew to like him. Charles Smith, a lone wolf used to surviving by himself, who was surprised at how fairly Dutch treated him despite his race and decided to stick around. Jenny Kirk, a young woman the gang found abandoned on the roadside. And of course, Micah Bell. Micah saved Dutch's life when Dutch tried to sell stolen gold at a place known as Crenshaw Hill. Dutch accidentally offended some locals, leading them to attempting to kill him, which is where Micah stepped in. The gang saw Micah as something of an untrustworthy, cold-blooded hothead, and one with unclear, self-centred motivations at that, leading Micah to have a strange relationship with most of the gang members. In 1899, the gang found itself in the state of West Elizabeth, deciding to camp outside of the town of Blackwater, a rapidly growing industrial town where Micah eventually convinced Dutch to rob a riverboat carrying money from the bank, and the rest is history. And there you go, that concludes today's video on the rise of the Vandalin gang. Jesus Christ, that took ages to make, but it feels so worth it now that it's done. So thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, I'd really appreciate it. Maybe consider becoming a patron if you want to support the channel even further. You get some extra content over there as well, it's pretty cool, but whether or not you think it's worth it is completely up to you. And I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.